Oh hey, we have a stand-in for Lucifer. Thanks, Alfie. Hey everybody, it's Jamie here and welcome back to another video and today to celebrate Halloween and October we're taking a look at the Disney villain dolls. So to start things off we have Lady Tremaine here and we're going to be unboxing and reviewing her today. Let's go. Okay, so this is the box. So this is the original Lady Tremaine doll that came out in 2012 along with the original limited edition Cinderella doll. So she was limited edition one of 1,500. So back then, the cool thing is that only the villains got like colored boxes. The princesses and the heroes were always in the white border boxes and only the villains got these darker colored themed boxes. So it was kind of quite cool back then. So the patterns on her borders are like reflective kind of foil material. So that's pretty cool. And overall her window shape is almost similar to that of Cinderella's. On the side panels, we just have some ornate details for the windows, nothing too special. And on the back, I really love that the back also have like shiny foil pattern going on. And it says Lady Tremaine, doesn't say the name of the movie though. And you can pause and read this little bit if you'd like. And she originally retailed for 99.5. And on the top window, it doesn't say anything, you just have the window. That is it for the box, so now let's take her out. All right, so here is my certificate of authenticity. So unlike Cinderella's certificate, which was very plain, her certificate still features the same shiny foil patterns as the box did. So that's pretty cool. And mine is number 399 out of 1,500. And it's cool to see that even the inner side of her box is the same darker blue color. So that's pretty cool because we're not very used to seeing this kind of color uh, even on the inside of the box. All right, so before we take her out, let's admire her in her original box posing to cement her this way in our memory. And now we can bust her out. So I noticed that my doll's face is very, very oily and apparently very, very shiny. So I don't know what is happening there. She has been staying in her brown package for several years since I've got her. So maybe some chemical reactions or if it's just moisture. You can see that some of it got on my finger too. So I hopefully, um, nothing too serious and hopefully we can just wash it off or wipe it off later. All right, so she is out of the box and immediately, you know, just my luck, I knew it was gonna happen, but my stand is already on the verge of breaking. So can you see the crack? Wait, wait there, there. You can see the crack there, right? So it's already almost breaking. It has already cracked, so I took the opportunity to already glue it. So I'm hopefully the glue will hold it together and prevent it from breaking completely. So yeah, that's the problem that I've been facing. If you have been watching my video, this will be the third time that I broke a stand while deboxing right out of the box. Now, before I take a look at the doll, let's take a look at her background. So her background is, I think, the living room or the foyer of um, her their chateau. This is the stair where Cinderella comes down. And surprisingly, it's actually in really good quality. It's very HD. But hey, before we go into the details, let's take a 360 look of the doll notice anything different yes she is now on a motorized rotating display stand that i purchased recently so i no longer have to do my really awkward and cringy um, manual 360s so it's pretty cool it's just that it spins too slow so we can speed it up So her dress have all these ties in the back to keep the dress in shape or maybe to just to maintain the pleats. Um, but overall, it's a nice dress. It has a nice poof. And um, yeah, overall, it's a quite, quite nicely executed. Okay, so first up, we need to do something about the shiny stuff happening on her face. I just think it's probably condensation or moisture from being in storage for a long time. 
um, or it could be chemical reactions. I don't know, but I'm gonna use a Q-tip and try to clean it off. I'm hoping and praying to God that it does not end up taking off her face paint or I will cry. Um, her hair is actually heavily gelled as well, so maybe it could just be the product in her hair seeping down while she was in storage, maybe? Okay, I kind of think that did the trick. Looks much better in person, but still coming off very shiny on camera though, but I'll continue wiping it off with some tissue after the video. All right, now let's get into the details. Her collar is kind of blocking the light, so it's casting a shadow on her, so I, please forgive me for that. All right, so for her face sculpt, she features the original face sculpt that Disney did around that time. Um, I think her classic dolls and also the um, the designer doll together with Cinderella also features this similar sculpt. Um, they upgraded the sculpt with the Midnight Masquerade doll and I have to say that um, they, they really improved the sculpt with the Midnight Masquerade one. More personality and essence and expression and you know character in that sculpt. But this one also nicely captures her like mean demeanor, like the stare is just like if looks could kill, this look will probably slay me. The way she is just glaring at Cinderella. So I, I think this sculpt and paint also nicely captures that. Alright, so she has her green eyes, really arched eyebrows, and I love her eye, um, um, eye makeup. It's brown on the lids and there's also like a little bit of purple and lilac happening just to top it top it off you know and she has her cat wing painted eyeliner and also her rooted lashes if you can see there we go and she has her signature kind of dark red burgundy lip color it almost matches her dress color actually and she have this really really nasty frown that i love for this character and really define smile lines to show off her age and also her, you know, her not so nice personality. So her hair is in this really high, big, but simple bun. I don't know, wait, let me show, let me try to pull this down. I hope I won't break it. Oh, there we go. So it's just like, I think it's just pulled up and then it's tied in a ponytail and then it's tucked underneath there. Wait. You can see you can almost see the rubber band inside and for the front bit it's just pulled up into this heart shaped bun i think it's a lot of the gel that's keeping its shape because i'm trying to squish it i don't feel like any support or foam or anything inside so maybe it's just the way uh, and it's gelled and they probably just teased it a lot to keep the poof or i could be wrong and there's something underneath there as well but for now i cannot feel it so her hair is rooted in this mix of black and white. So these parts are all white, the middle and the sides, but the main parts are all mixed together. So it creates that really nice effect of a aging lady where she still has her dark hair, but there are also some gray hair underneath in there as well. So that's pretty nice. Okay, and here is a side profile of her sculpt because I didn't think I showed it earlier. I really love the really strong nose and the really strong pointy chin. Reminds me of the Wicked Witch from Oz. Okay, for her accessories, she is wearing like two stud earrings of emeralds. One on this side and one on that side. They also have a really nice little gold trim that's encasing the emerald. And for her neck piece collar thingy, it's, I love the fact that it's an exaggerated version of the collar that she actually wears in the movie. It's very similar. Her collar is a pleated purple collar in the movie, but right now it's like exaggerated to a whole nother level. Into this Edwardian kind of inspired collar. So it's pretty cool. I thought there would be a, like wire in there for us to maybe pose it, but there is no wire in there though. All right, so underneath that, her collar is actually attached to her dress. It's not a separate piece. So it builds up from this little uh, purple neckline that she has that are encrusted with purple jewels. So moving down to her outfit, her outfit then turns into this beautiful velvet burgundy uh, red, deep red dress. And she have these gold rope-like trims all around. In the middle, she also has her brooch, which is just a bigger version of her earrings. They're encased in a gold um, trim, and then the gem is there. And then she has her puffy sleeves, again detailed with the rope lining. 
And then she has her sleeves, which are still velvet. And then ending up with her little bell sleeve kind of thing, which is this soft material of pleated purple and lined with gold trim. And on this hand, she is holding her iconic key that she uses to lock Cinderella in, in the attic. So it's attached with a little black ribbon and the key is here. And surprisingly, I thought the key would have been plastic, but it's actually metal. It's a very thin key though, but I'm surprised that it's metal and it's a nice surprise. And it's nicely sculpted as well. All right, so as we move down her dress, she have the same um, velvet material here that kind of falls like an overdress or a peplum kind of thing. They're kind of attached to her main skirt so that they stay in shape, but I'll try to cut it off later. And this is the back. So it forms into a pleat kind of thing. So I love that it has like some room to move and not like, you know, the same size as the main part of the dress. So, and underneath all of that, we have the main part of her dress, which is this red satin, which is the same color as the, you know, the velvet layer on top. But this time it's satin, it's shiny, and it's too layered. All right, now let's take a look at her shoes. So underneath all of that, she also has her mesh layer petticoat. So that's nice. And these are her shoes. So her shoes are these simple black, well, not black, the same burgundy color, but darker. And these are the, um, the, the, the generic standard shoe sculpts that Disney did around that time. Not much detail there. Just plain pumps. Fun fact, one of the reasons that we named him Elfie is because of how the mice calls Lucifer in the movie. Like they call him Lucifer, so we kind of took inspiration from that and hence Elfie was born. Okay, are you done? Can I continue with my review? Okay, it doesn't look like Elfie is going to be moving anytime soon, so we're going to continue with our video. Um, I'm sure he'll just leave by the time he gets bored. But anyway, so my overall thoughts on this doll. This doll is a pretty solid doll. Um, as you can see, this doll doesn't feature any embroideries on her dress, and I don't think I quite mind that because you know, during the time when she was, when she came out in 2012, embroideries weren't a thing yet. Embroideries weren't a thing until the, you know, 2013, I believe, with the November Anna and Elsa dolls. But back then, it just goes to show that it doesn't have to have embroideries to make uh, a good doll. She has details and um, elaborate stuff happening in her own court. The collar, the pleated collar, the jams, the pleated sleeves, uh, the gold rope detail that goes across everywhere on her dress. And the only comment that I would add for this doll is that instead of having such a plain fabric for the main part of the dress, I would have loved for it to have, you know, more fabric so that it creates, you know, the natural ruffles and folds and it would give more dimension and texture and detail into the main part of the dress. And yes, she's such a great companion piece to the Cinderella doll. So either you have the original Cinderella or the sack Cinderella or especially the rag Cinderella, she would be tremendously great to go with that doll. Okay, fun fact, I was just wrapping the video and I happened to read the description on the back of the box. And it says that Lady Tremaine wears a matching green stone ring and carries a golden key to lock Cinderella away. So I was like, we didn't see no ring when we we're doing the review. So yeah, she actually doesn't have a matching ring. So I guess uh, at one point during production, they considered giving her a matching ring because now that I remember it, she does wear a ring in the movie, but they decided to take it out last minute, I suppose, to in the production due to budgeting reasons. But you know, it's a nice thing. They probably planned these boxes way ahead, so they probably didn't have time to edit it out. All right, so that wraps up my review of the limited edition Lady Tremaine doll. So I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like, do you like her? Do you love her? Do you have her? Do you prefer her or the Midnight Masquerade doll? Uh, let your thoughts flow down in the comments. Uh, you can also check me out on Instagram at Chimmy Creates for more toy photography. And if you enjoyed this video, you can like and thumbs up and subscribe here on my channel so you get more toy videos in your video feeds. Once again, thank you so much for watching until the very end and I'll see you all soon in my next video. Bye!